I recently posted a photograph on uh, social media and I received quite a few inquiries personally about one of the things that I mentioned, which was that I'd used the Tony Caper TK8 panel while um, putting the photograph together. Now, admittedly, I only used it as part of an experiment, but I have been using Tony Caper's panels for the last decade, I suppose, since I first came across his um, writings on using luminosity masks to make selections in Photoshop. So ever since then, I have been using luminosity masks for those really fine gradation kind of selections. So the image in question that I shot in the Drakensberg last year on a workshop for Nature's Light, although most cameras are now able to capture an enormous dynamic range, you still get those situations where the sky is just blown out. There's too, there's too much light to be able to record both the sky and the foreground faithfully. In these situations, it makes sense to take two photographs, one for your sky, one for your foreground, and then merge the two together in Photoshop or another blending program. Now, the problem is that very often you get quite unnatural um, blends as a result of the software that you're using. Tony Caper's panel, though, makes it very easy to make a selection that only selects the highlights so that you can bring it through. So let's take a look at the examples that I'm using over here. Now I'm actually using a uh, example here from Capture One because I'm not a huge fan of Lightroom. So in Capture One, you can see that I have my photograph for the sky over here and my photograph for the foreground. Um, this is the many needles that you can see in the background. So I have these two images that I'm going to use to blend together to be able to get the sky and the foreground. I have gone and adjusted it ever so slightly in Capture One. So here you can see my sky image. Before I had nothing coming through in the shadows. I wanted to make sure there was a little bit of information coming through so that my edges blend a little bit more neatly. In my foreground images you can see I've lightened up the foreground a little bit as well. Okay so I have these two images. I'm going to select both of them and I'm going to edit with Photoshop. Now, if I were using Lightroom, which as I said, is, I'm not a huge fan of Lightroom. If I were using Lightroom, I would go ahead and um, just open a smart objects and be able to still come back into Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw to be able to make further raw adjustments. If I'm looking at my two images, they've loaded up into Photoshop. All I need to do is I'm going to go through to the Tony Caper multi panel over here, and I'm going to go down to the bottom and using one of the actions, which is to stack it then stacks the two images on top of each other, which is really quite useful. Okay, so you can see I've got my two images in the layer panel over here. I'm going to take my um, brighter image so that it's on top and I'm actually going to switch it off so that you can't see it. So I just switch off the eye over there. Using the Tony Caper multi-panel over here, I'm going to go through and find the Select Skies button. Once I hit that, Tony Caper's algorithms will get together and it creates a selection. You can see that it, the selection is made by the fact that there's this block around the block uh, around the, the panel itself. I'm going to go switch on my eye for my sky shot again and you can actually see the marching ants here where the sky selection has been made and I'm going to create a mask. And there you go. Just from that, just that simple technique, I've managed to merge both my sky and my foreground so that they actually are coming through and I've got a nice dynamic range through both images. What I did notice when I did this though, and you can also by clicking on or holding Alt and clicking on your um, mask, you can actually see the details over here. So it's allowing a perfectly gradate, grad, gradated blend. So it's even allowing little bits of light to come through on the grass for instance. So when we look at the actual image, you can see that there is a perfect, perfect blend. However, because it is so perfect, it actually looks unnatural in some areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab my mask over here. I'm going to do this in two stages. I'm first going to feather this out a little bit so that it looks a bit more natural. There you go. You can actually see the edging along the mountains here looks somewhat better. But by creating that feather, I'm also haloing this little area here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer. So I hit Command and J, so that is duplicated. I'm then going to come back and unfeather that. So we have the same problem over here. And all I'm now going to do is grab my brush and um, just paint out the area that I don't want. Okay, so there we go. So now it means that I have my perfect masking in the edge over here. And I have also got my softer masking on the edge or over there. 
And that's it, really, really simple, just by using the Select Sky tool. And it works on other kinds of images as well. So I'm gonna close this up quickly, and just go, don't save over there. And I've got another two examples over here. Now these are two photographs that were shot in um, Kietmanshoop, near the uh, uh, Giants playground. And you can see some quiver trees up against a really, really bright sunrise sky. We have a huge dynamic range over here that you can't handle with a single exposure, not at least without bringing up noise in your shadows. So what I've done is, again, I've taken a photograph for my sky and I've taken a photograph for my foreground. There's only about two or three stops difference between them, but you can see that I have got tonal gradation in my sky and I have got nice shadow detail in my foreground, okay? And in fact, in this image over here, I've actually opened up the shadows just a touch more, and in my sky, I can bring back that highlight a little bit as well. Okay, same process. I'm gonna select my two photographs. I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna say Edit in Photoshop. So I'm gonna open those up as TIFFs with Adobe RGB or Profoto wide RGB color space. Then I'm going to open up in Photoshop. I've got my two images there. Using the Tony Caper panel, once more, all you do is you go through and go down to the actions at the bottom and say stack, and the two images are going to stack up together. I'm just gonna swap it because I like working with my darker images on the top of the layer stack and my lighter images at the bottom. So switching off the eye to the top layer, now we're doing this because what we want to do is select all the brighter tones and replace those with the darker tones from the darker photograph. So I've switched off that eye, I'm then going to have my brighter image highlighted so that that is the active layer. And I'm just going to once more find that little button on the find skies, okay? Tony Capers panel does its job and you can see the marching ants are in place. I'll reopen my darker layer and have that selected and create a mask based on that. All right, and there we go. Oopsie. Sorry, I'll just make that mask again. There we go, right. So you can see we have a perfect selection happening over here. If I zoom in, all the edges are absolutely perfect. Wherever there has been some detail in my luminosity, it has created the mask. So if we look at the mask itself, you can actually see that is the mask. You can't do that with a brush. Now, there is one small problem that, they, that is going to come up with these images. And you'll notice in the mask here that because of the algorithm that we're using, which is the select sky rather than select a particular tone, we are getting a slight haloing effect. So if I jump onto my actual layer, you'll see that there's an ever so slight halo around the trees where you've got all the detail. That's fine. We're gonna use the Tony Caper luminosity masks to be able to fix that. So if you go back, and I'm gonna go back and look at my mask by holding down the Alt and clicking on the mask, you can see we're wanting to select these lighter tones and bring them through. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into this. We're gonna switch this off here access this again, and now I'm gonna go into my actual luminosity masks itself. So I'm gonna look through, and we're looking for these tones. So if I select a brighter tone, something like this, there we go, that could work. And we can also expand that tone. So I'm going into zone two over here, and I'm gonna expand the tone by using the contrast curve. So we're just gonna brighten that up. There we go. Make sure that we are only getting those bright tones coming through. There we go, right. So now this is my mask that I'm gonna create. All right, I'm then going to access that mask so that it is essentially a selection. And my selection is now in place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump back into my layer over here, and I'm gonna make sure that I paint white ink onto my selection. So I'm gonna switch my ink over here, and to make sure that uh, there aren't any issues, I'm just going to put this into overlay, which it means that it's only gonna paint in the white ink into whiter areas. And as we paint in, you can see that the sky is going to come through. Just give uh, Photoshop a chance to catch up over there. There we go. So when I open this back up, and at the moment I'm just doing this using the, um, here we go. If I go back into this layer here, whoop, sorry. <laughs> It helps if you have your uh, mask selected. Let me just undo that. And we'll go back into the mask itself. And you'll see that now the halo has disappeared. So what I've done is I've used luminosity masks along with Tony Caper's Select Sky to be able to create a perfect selection of an area around what is actually quite finicky detail. 
there is no way you can create a mask using just your um, your brush to be able to get this kind of detail. And I can continue if I want to get more of that lower um, tone out. So I'm just going to unselect my mark, my um, my selection over here. And again, if I were to do this and go back into my um, my luminosity masks, this time I'm using an infinity mask. So I'm going to select a tone here. I'm going to go OK. And again, we can see oh, that doesn't really work. Um, let's go back into the usual masks. There we go. We're going to select our darks. There, that's nice over there. And I'm going to expand that using the levels tool this time. So we're just going to expand that and bring back the blacks over there. Cool. So you can see whatever is white here is essentially what I'm going to be selecting. So once more, if I grab my marching ants by creating a selection from this, I'm going to go back into my mask over here. And what we're trying to do is paint black ink into where the mask is. So if I click on here, you can see little areas like this are an issue. Now I have my black ink selected and we're just going to paint that in. And wherever that selection was, is just going to get a little bit more highlighted. There we go. Right. That's it. So you can see using the luminosity masks, I'm able to make quite accurate um, selections and be able to merge the two images together. Right. So this was a very quick um, demonstration. I can do these images at a later stage as a full workflow using the Tony Caper luminosity mask, as well as some of the other actions that I like using. But um, just as a quick sort of um, put the two images together using just the sky, the sky selection tool, this is it. If you enjoyed the video, pop a like in the bottom. I will try and do some more of these. You can also follow me along for further videos on Photoshop work and working out in the field with filters and composition. Thanks for watching. Cheers.